real world rule of money that we're going to talk about today is debt versus equities. In the financial industry, there's, there's really two basic ways uh, that money is invested or saved and, and the way that we earn interest or the value of our money can increase. And so there's debt institutions and equity institutions. So for example, if I take uh, my money and I take it to the bank, put my money in the bank, how does the bank earn money? What the bank does is they take that money, they leverage it, they loan it out to people uh, and get other people in debt, uh, creating a secure payment for them. Uh, there's a contract made, the person is making a payment back to the bank with interest and that becomes a debt-based uh, a debt-based place to save money uh, where it's based on the principles of debt, where getting other people into debt is how uh, they can earn interest. And so somebody asked me once as I was explaining this, is, is that kind of how a bond works? Yes, and that is, that's how a bond works. Somebody's getting in debt and somebody's making a payment and the person that's making the payment is earning the interest on that payment, whether, you know, we're getting uh, a company in debt and, and getting bonds uh, and they're paying us the interest uh, or we take our money to the bank and they're uh, loaning it out or there's even people, uh, hard money lenders, where they're taking their own personal money or funds of others and loaning it to other people and then the, the payments plus interest is how is how they make money and that's a debt investment or a debt-based place to save money. Then you have equities uh, where an equity is actually, in reality, purchasing a small piece of something, uh, whether it's you know based in real estate, whether it's based in the stock market, whether it's based in um, uh, you know commercial properties, or it's based in you know a, some sort of technology that's helping to be developed, businesses, etc., um, where the, the investor or the person that's saving the money actually owns a little tiny piece of the company. So to give, to give you an idea of what this looks like and kind of the two uh, most basic ways to look at this is you have stocks and mutual funds. So stocks, uh, very easily explained as it was explained to me at age 21 when I had no clue what any of this stuff meant. Uh, when I was 21 years old, somebody drew out on a piece of paper two elevators. One had the little stick man in it with one line on it, and the other had the stick man with multiple lines. And before they even explained to me the difference, they just said, which elevator would you rather be in? And I said, well, probably the one on the right. And he said, well, why the one on the right? He said, well, the one on the left, if that cord breaks, I'm dead. But if one cord breaks on the other one, you may, may not feel it, um, but it looks just a little bit more secure. And he says, okay, now that you understand how elevators work and, and look, uh, that's basically an, a, a way to describe the difference between stocks and bonds. If we look at that, the elevator on the left and we look at that line and we were to write the word Nike or Google or Microsoft on that line and that cord or that line cable represents Nike stock or Microsoft stock. That means that the person in the elevator took some of their money, went to Microsoft, let's say, and Microsoft has split up its company into whole little pieces called shares and they issue stock, uh, shares of their stock. <coughs> you can buy a certain amount of their stock. Uh, most companies don't, and we're not getting into a, a, a training on securities or equities or anything like that, but it's basically I can purchase, uh, not usually one at a time, uh, I can buy groups of them, but I can, I can actually invest money uh, in the company where I actually am a small, small partial owner of that company, but then because it gives people that sense of ownership, it increases the value of that company as their hope. Uh, but then, as we know, sometimes companies' stock goes up, sometimes it goes down. So this is kind of another reference to having all your eggs in one basket. If I'm in the elevator on the left and all of my money, 
of the money that I have is with Microsoft, then I'm betting my life uh, in this elevator that uh, it's not going to crash and burn. On the right uh, has been an approach of many mutual fund companies, and there are thousands and thousands, 10,000 plus mutual funds out there that are not invested in more than one company, more than one uh, sector of the market, and it, it's meant to, uh, you've maybe heard the word diversify and spread out uh, risk so that if, if one company, if Microsoft happened to be, Microsoft stock happened to be in uh, a mutual fund, uh, some mix of, of, of the, the, the way that the mutual fund operates, is uh, if Microsoft were to crash and burn, maybe we'd notice a little bit, but we wouldn't totally die in our little elevator. So that's a concept of debt versus equities, and then inside of equities, stocks versus mutual funds. And that's our impact real-world rule of money for the day.